proteins are polymers of amino acids. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how we can combine amino acids into a protein and how different higher levels of structure for a polypeptide chain are possible. We're going to let the beads represent amino acids. The primary structure of an amino acid refers to the sequence of the different amino acids in the polypeptide chain. So here we have a model of a polypeptide chain with different kinds of amino acids strung together. In reality, they're not strung on a piece of wire, but they're connected by peptide bonds. The secondary structure of a protein refers to how the polypeptide chain is twisted on itself. One type of secondary structure is called an alpha helix, and an alpha helix results when the chain coils in a helical structure like this. The secondary structure, the, the alpha helix, is stabilized by hydrogen bonding between nearby amino acid residues, specifically between the hydrogen on the amide nitrogen and a nearby carbonyl oxygen. This kind of secondary structure is common in proteins such as wool and other stretchy type proteins because the alpha helix has room to give. Another common type of secondary structure is called a beta pleated sheet. A beta pleated sheet results when nearby linear strands of a polypeptide chain which may either be within the same polypeptide chain or between different polypeptide chains line up in a linear fashion. Again, it's hydrogen bonding that holds this secondary structure together when hydrogens on nitrogens in one chain form a hydrogen bond to the carbonyl oxygen in an adjacent chain. This kind of structure, beta pleated sheet, is common in proteins such as silk and you, you know from experience that silk doesn't have much give and this is a physical manifestation of the fact that the polypeptide chains in silk are already as extended as they can go. So secondary structure includes the alpha helix and the beta pleated sheet. Tertiary structure refers to how the polypeptide chain that has been twisted into a secondary structure folds onto itself to form a compact globular structure. So as I fold the various regions of this polypeptide chain into a more compact structure, that represents a tertiary structure. Tertiary structures are held together by hydrogen bonding between amino acids in different regions of the polypeptide. There's also London forces which result from folding the nonpolar alkyl side chains in the amino acid towards the interior of the protein. Now what we've seen here is really a great simplification of reality because while the primary structure or the sequence of amino acids in the polypeptide chain determines all of the higher levels of structure in the polypeptide chain and ultimately the function of the protein, one of the fundamental unanswered questions in physical biochemistry is how can we predict what secondary and tertiary structures are likely to result based on a given primary structure. In summary, the primary structure of proteins is the sequence of amino acids in the polypeptide chain. Amino acids are covalently bonded together by amide functional groups, also called peptide bonds. The secondary structure is how the chain is twisted or folded. The alpha helix is a coil of amino acids that are held in place by hydrogen bonding. Wool is a stretchy protein that is mostly alpha helix. Another type of secondary structure is the beta pleated sheet, which consists of extended chains of amino acids. 
The beta pleated sheet is held in place by hydrogen bonding between groups on adjacent chains. Silk is a non-stretchy protein that is mostly beta pleated sheets. Tertiary structure is how the twisted chain is folded into a compact structure. Tertiary structure is held in place by hydrogen bonding and by London forces among nonpolar groups that are folded into the interior of the protein away from the water environment.